Hello YouTube, 99% of you have never heard about Professor Reisner and his revelations about the Sphinx. Incredible revelations. The question is why? Let me read you this from the Northern Territory Times and Gazette, which was published in Australia. And the date of this article is Thursday, March 1914. And the title is The Secret of the Sphinx. Professor G.A. Reisner of Harvard University, who has been making an scientific examination of that mysterious Egyptian monument known as the Sphinx, has made several notable discoveries, with, it is hoped, will contribute materially towards the elucidation of a problem that has puzzled the ages. Inside the Sphinx, he found a temple dedicated to the sun. It is older than any of the pyramids, and its date is somewhere around 6000 BC, the most ancient in Egyptian history. Mena of Menes, as his name is sometimes spelled, was the first king of Egypt, of whom modern scientists have discovered historic record. The tomb of Mena, the king, who made himself a god, had, who fashioned the Sphinx, is also within it. There are tunnels leading into caverns which have not yet been penetrated, for the work has only been going on for some six months. The Sphinx is carved out of the natural rock, but within are the caves and buildings of a city of gold, which was perhaps once open to the air. At present, the excavations are confined to the chamber in the head. The chamber is 60 feet long by 14 feet wide. It is connected by tunnels with the Temple of the Sun, which rests within the paws of the Sphinx. Such relics as the Crux and Sata symbol of the Sun are found by the hundreds. Several of these are gold, and some have wires for tiny bells, which, when sounded by the priests, summoned up ghosts. Inside the Sphinx are also tiny pyramids, although the Sphinx was built long before the Great Pyramids. A pyramid in those days was, sundial, was a sundial, according to Professor Reisner, and the Sphinx was a sun god. The pyramid of Cheops is an absolutely accurate timekeeper. According to Professor Reisner, Egypt is one vast city, the edge of which only has been scratched, and the interior of which probably never will be disclosed. This newspaper, Northern Territory Times and Gazette, existed until the year 1927. Who was Professor Reisner. George Andrew Reisner Jr. was an American archaeologist of ancient Egypt, Nubia, and the land of Israel. Reisner was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. His father's forebears had been German immigrants. At Harvard, where he was a student, he received a study grant to research cuneiform at the University in Göttingen. He studied additionally under the Egyptologist Adolf Ehrman in Berlin. Reisner received his PhD in 1893, writing a dissertation on Semitic languages. In 1899, the same year, in that year, Reisner convinced Phoebe Hearst, the widow of the late California Senator George Hearst, to fund the Hearst expedition to Egypt. Reisner being appointed director, as well as the Hearst Lecturer in Egyptology at the University of California, Berkeley. Upon his studies at Jebel Barkal, the Holy Mountain, in Nubia, he found the Nubian kings were not buried in the pyramids, but outside of them. He also found the skull of a Nubian female, who he thought was a king, which is in the collection of the Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology at Harvard. 
Reisner believed that Kerma was originally the base of an Egyptian governor and that these Egyptian rulers evolved into the independent monarchs of Kerma. He also created a list of Egyptian viceroys of Kush. He found the tomb of Queen Hetaferes I, the mother of King Khufu, Cheops in Greek, who built the Great Pyramid at Giza. During this time, he also explored Mastabas. Arthur Merton of the London Times remarked in 1936, in the aftermath of the Abu Tiu discovery, that Reisner enjoys an unrivaled position not only as the outstanding figure in present-day Egyptology, but also as a man whose soundness of judgment and extensive general knowledge are widely conceded. The Egyptian dog Abu Tiu, also translated as Abu Tiu, died before 2280 BC, was one of the earliest documented domestic animals whose name is known. Um, it is believed to have been a royal guard dog who lived in the 6th dynasty um, and received an elaborate ceremonial burial in the Giza necropolis at the behest of a pharaoh whose name is unknown. In 1902, permission to excavate the Western Cemetery at Giza was granted by Gaston Maspero, director of the Egyptian Antiquities Service. This, the area was divided into three sections and chosen by lot. The 1902-1905 excavations were financed by Phoebe Apperson Hurst. The southern section was given to the Italians under Ernesto Schiparelli. The northern strip to the Germans under Ludwig Borchardt and the middle section to Andrew Reisner. He met Queen Marie of Romania in Giza. At the outbreak of World War I in Europe, Reisner, who had been associated with German scholars all his life, deliberated long about which side to support before siding with his native country. In 1914, he became professor of Egyptology at Harvard. In Egypt, Reisner developed a new archaeological technique which became standard in the profession, combining the British methods of Petri, the German methods of Dorpfeld and Caldaway, his own American practicality, and his skill for large-scale organization. Despite later being recognized as a mark of good practice, this technique was at the time controversial and was criticized as being overly elaborate. So, a man of academic standing, of great discoveries, respected and very detailed oriented. Reisner was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1914 and the American Philosophical Society in 1940. And again, 1914 to 1942, he was professor of Egyptology at Harvard University. He passed away in 1942 and died almost idyllically in his sleep at the Giza site in the shadow of the Great Pyramid. Reisner's last written book was A History of the Giza Necropolis, Cambridge, Harvard University, Press 1942. Let me also mention that in 1945 he announced among his greatest discovery the alabaster sarcophagus of Queen Hetaferis, mother of Cheops. In 1931 paper he read described the Egyptian dynasty so vividly that it was covered in the London Times. As an archaeologist during, that, during the period when excavation was becoming more scientific, Reisner devised his own method of documentation, more elaborate than that of the Sir Flanders Petri. His method became the most methodical used in Egyptian excavations. He figures as among the most important archaeologists of the 20th century. His students at his digs knew him as Papa George. Reisner's humor and knowledge were renowned. When the archaeologist opened the tomb of Queen Hetaferis and found it empty, destroyed by grave robbers centuries earlier, 
He reportedly replied to those accompanying him, I regret Queen Hetaferis is not receiving. There was an interesting article called Riddle of Sphinx in the Cambridge Tribune, volume 34, number 24, August 12, 1911. Solved by Professor Reisner, who fixes time and the reason for its construction. And I'll just read you a little bit. When the announcement was made some time ago that Professor George A. Reisner of Harvard University has succeeded at last in identifying the Sphinx and solving its hitherto impenetrable mystery, various solutions appeared in print all unofficial and anticipatory and all more or less incorrect. It was not the intention of Professor Reisner, in view of the attitude of the Harvard authorities, to divulge the secrets, the results, sorry, of his investigation until his report was prepared and ready for official publication. I have not seen any evidence of this report, and I looked at the bibliography. I think something happened in 1914 after the publication of the article in Australia, and Professor Reisner would not speak about the contents of the Sphinx again. I don't know what happened. I cannot cast any shadows on this really great archaeologist. And he is not here to tell us. Maybe the documents in Berkeley or Harvard, if they can be found, can shed some light on it. But I believe something did happen. I want to read you something from the Journal of Egyptian Archaeology, um, published by the Egypt, Egypt Exploration Fund 37, at the 37 Great Russell Street, WC London in the year 1915. Something very interesting. And here, here it goes. The action of the American Committee in carrying on our work under the joint Anglo-American leadership of Professor Whitmore and Wainwright is much appreciated as a radio help in time of difficulty and as a proof that the American public has no belief whatever in the ridiculous German lies about disturbances in Egypt, the fact that Professor Reisner is carrying on business as usual at Giza, of course, tells Boston that all is well on the banks of the Nile in spite of the observed inventions of the egregious Herr Enke and the credulity of Tante Vos. And so Boston keeps the funds flag flying in Egypt. It's not gibberish. It's maybe we just don't understand something. What disturbances? All I have at this point is questions, but I'm sure maybe somebody in the future could find answers. Why a world-renowned Egyptologist, an archaeologist of great fame, decided not to speak any more about the revelations he made in 1914. And if you want to know what he made, again, you can listen to the beginning of this uh, video. I don't want to re-record, but from my studies of ancient Egypt, I think what Professor Reisner found is, I don't want to say incredible, but definitely very, very important. I will bring you more stories about the concealed history of the ancient world, about ancient Egypt, Roman Empire, of course, Shumer, and the lands most of you have never heard about, and the ancient civilizations of what is known today as Russia, the Arctic areas as well, and beyond. If you like my research, please kindly support me in the description. You will find the links in the description to this 
a video, please tell others about my channel and uh, please like my videos and thank you all for your attention to my work.